In an earlier recording we showed you how to turn on an LED using a photocell and now we're going to go through the calculations on how we pick the values that we picked. Okay this is a schematic of the circuit on the breadboard and what we have is a photocell at the top and the symbol for a photocell is a resistor looking symbol with a circle around it and an arrow coming in that indicates light coming into the sensor. It means it's, it detects light and that's R1 and then we have an LED at the bottom which is a basically a type of diode that emits light and it looks like a diode with an arrow going out. Now the properties of the photocell if we measure it in ambient light we find out that it's 2000 ohms now every photocell is going to give different results here so you'll have to measure yours and see what you come up with um, but this, this particular photocell had a 2k resistance in ambient light 2000 ohms and I found out that when I shine a flashlight on it it went down to about 700 ohms and actually it would get quite a bit lower than that depending on whether the flashlight was real close and, or shining directly at it so that was sort of the range that I wanted to work with here. So I decided that um, a good threshold for this, a good round number for the threshold, would be a thousand ohms. So what I'm decided on is that 1,000 ohms is the resistance, something in between 700 and 2K. This is the resistance that my target resistance for this photocell when this photocell reaches a thousand ohms I want the LED to come on. So the next thing you need to figure out is what are the other what are the some of the voltages here? Well we have a nine volt battery and the LED is a green LED that requires two volts to turn on. So we know that this voltage has to be two volts across the LED and R2 since these two are in parallel. Now using Kirchhoff's voltage law that means that the voltage across the photocell has to be 9 volts minus 2 volts or 7 volts. So this voltage we have 7 volts so that lets us solve for R2 the only thing left to solve for. To find the value of R2 we can just use Ohm's law. We can just say the first thing we want to go through is find the current. So we're going to find this current I and I is equal to 7 volts over 1000 ohms and that's going to give us 7 milliamps which is 0 0.007 amps. Now once we found this current then we can just take this and use it to find what the voltage is across R2 because VR2 is simply going to be equal to R2 times 0 0.007 amps but if we're solving for R2, R2 is going to be equal to V R2 over 0 0.007 amps which equals 2 volts because that's our voltage that we need to, to get the LED to turn on divided by 0 0.007 and that equals 2 volts divided by 0 0.007 equals 285 ohms Now, maybe you noticed on the breadboard, but I have a 330 ohm resistor there, which is fine. I just rounded this up to 330. It was something I had in my junk box, and there's nothing super critical about these resistance values. One of the things you get used to in electronics is the fact that resistor values are not super critical and you can't even get the values that you calculate most of the time anyway 
because resistors come in standard values and once you learn what those values are you find out that they vary quite a bit from things that you calculate so you typically have to round up to another resistor value or round down um, but this circuit's not critical there's quite a range of resistor values you could use to uh, to make this work okay so the next question is what do you do with this information you know besides building this little fun circuit that reacted to a beam of light what else can you do with it well the next step would be to interface it to something like a bipolar junction transistor or MOSFET to drive a larger load and when you've got more than one transistor you can start doing some some complex things like having a, a flip-flop react to the beam of light so that when you the beam of light hits it once it turns on and when it hits it again it turns off sort of like a clapper or something like that but that's once you get into transistors you can just really just go crazy with it um, and of course integrated circuits are another device you can interface to with an integrated circuit like a 555 timer you can have a circuit whose frequency varies with light levels um, or you can use the internal flip-flops and comparators to do some fairly complex processing from the, the sensor data and remember the data doesn't have to the sensor data doesn't have to be light a light sensor it can be any kind of sensor um, something that processes sound, something that processes pressure, something that processes temperature. Um, and, and of course the ultimate is to take a voltage divider circuit like this and interface it to a microcontroller. You, know, you can interface it to any number of microcontrollers, the Arduino, um, the basic stamp, the uh, Q-Block, uh, a PLC, any kind of device you want to interface it to and do some extremely complex processing like uh, motor drivers and um, servos. So I hope you're going to follow the series of uh, how we use sensors and of course the beginning is to use know how to use simple voltage dividers to get the data in the format that you want it. 